Which items should you choose to carry for self-defense? We're going to talk about that in this video. Stick around. I get this question a lot, actually. A lot of people out there are really unsure about what to carry, what's effective, and what's right for them depending upon where they're at physically and age-wise. The reason I did not title this video, What Weapons Should You Carry?, is because ultimately, we are the weapon. Our mind, our abilities, our level of awareness, all of these things are natural ingrained weapons. It starts with us, but in this video, I wanna focus on handheld items. This question is easy for a lot of people. Right off the bat, they looked at the title and many of them said, firearm, firearm, firearm. <laughs> I get it. Some are saying firearm and a knife. I get that too. These are commonly carried things and it's typically what I carry. I will typically have on me at any given time a lethal option and a less than lethal option. But as far as determining what you should carry, let's narrow it down to three questions. Number one, what are you comfortable carrying? You may not have access to a firearm and you may not be comfortable carrying a firearm, but you have to look at the wide range of defensive items available to you to determine you know, what you're willing to carry, what you're comfortable carrying, whether it be a knife, pepper spray, a stun gun, some sort of handheld coup baton. It could be some sort of baton, expandable baton. Could be a bright tactical flashlight. Could be a cane, or it could be one of these less than lethal style pistols. I think one's called the Hero. There's other things like pepper ball guns, CO2 guns. There's so many different things you can choose from. And being comfortable with carrying something is not just your own personal level of mental comfort, it needs to be your physical comfort. What can you physically and comfortably carry? Because what you can't carry comfortably is probably gonna get left at the house. So this part falls on you. You will have to do some research with regards to what you gravitate towards mentally, what you feel like you can manage, and what you feel like you can realistically take around with you. Now, you may not feel comfortable about certain things, but you may be able to in due time, which leads to my second point in determining what items you should carry. And that is, what are you willing to train with? What are you willing to spend time learning and mastering? Not only the ability to use, the ability to use effectively, the ability to use with an element of surprise. There's a lot of self-defense tools that are being marketed out here that are just not realistic in the real world with certain individuals because they haven't trained it. The item itself is not going to get up and do the work for you. You have to take that item and make it effective. A while back, I did a video about canes and self-defense and what a lot of people correctly said in the comments is that all this stuff that you're teaching us is pointless if I can hardly move. And that's true. So that comes back to determining again, what you can use and what you can use effectively in the real world when everything's going crazy. You may not be comfortable with a certain thing, but you can start getting educated on it and you may become more comfortable to carry certain things once you've trained. But Regardless of what you choose, you need to be willing to spend some time learning it and training with it. Every item you carry can have training that comes along with it. Even if it's pepper spray, get you a little spray bottle that's got water in it, it's got a spray can, and practice with one of your friends. Let him harass you. Learn how to conceal that spray can. Learn how to pull it out at the right time and try to get an effective spray in. There's so many ways you can train with the items that you carry. If you carry a firearm, you should get to the range as often as you can and shoot some rounds through the weapon that you carry. You can do other firearm training drills, such as just pulling, pulling and doing some dry fire drills. You can get a CO2 pistol that's very similar to what you carry. Uh, I have a Glock CO2. You can practice pulling that and shooting some cans at close range, just practicing basic mechanics of drawing and shooting. If it's knives that you carry, you need to be doing knife drills. Just get used to moving around with what it is you carry. Regardless of what you choose, just make sure that you are training and going through mechanics with it. 
The third question I will ask with regards to what you should carry is, where do you go? Where do you spend most of your time? What environment are you in? In reality, if you're out in the public a lot, if you're at the malls a lot, the grocery store a lot, walking down busy streets a lot, you're around a lot of people where a lot of things can happen. Riots, public shootings, random attacks, and that's where lethal options become important. A lot of people are not willing to carry around stuff that's lethal, but there have been times where lethal means have been needed. You got to consider where you're going because that determines what you might need your items for. You may live in an area that's more violent or hostile than others. Some people may live in very calm and peaceful areas where little to nothing has ever happened. All of these things matter, but the truth is no matter where you live or where you go, anything can happen. And as much as I hate to say it, where you live is going to determine what you can carry, what you can carry legally. Now, I know some people don't give mind to any of those things, you know, with regards to their viewpoint on constitutional carry. Um, and I understand that. And I don't agree with a lot of the state regulation stuff, but I do have to tell people that the responsible thing to do is to know what you can and cannot carry according to your state. And I know some of you disagree with that, and I even disagree with it. However, I still tell people to do that because they're the ones that's going to have to go to court, have all the court costs and all of this kind of stuff to try to stand up for their rights. So whether or not they go through that situation, it's still wise to know what's going on with regards to state regulations. Because it's not always just as easy as saying it's my constitutional right because so often people have to go through a lot of rigmarole and court battles to take that stand. Which leads to my next point in the discussion and that is you should always put your protection and the protection of your loved ones first and foremost. And whatever item you choose to carry and whatever item you choose to use, you need to have a good case and you need to be able to stand why you did what you did and used what you used. Yes, it's better to be tried by 12 than carried by six, but a lot of innocent people got tried by 12 and they went to prison and were later on carried by six. So let's avoid the blanket statements and use our head. So what are you comfortable carrying both mentally and physically? What could you maybe get more comfortably carrying and using through training? And where do you live? Where do you go? And what can you even carry? These are the questions that you need to be asking in determining what it is you should carry for your own personal protection. This comment section ought to be full of opinions, full of stories, full of examples, personal testimonies. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Take care.